Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we are back with more news and politics from around the world. So, yeah, I was watching some wrestling. Uh, anyway, we have here starting off from the Ask Science subreddit. Do satellites rotate to stay oriented toward Earth? As a satellite orbits a planet, really any mass of body, does it need to rotate in order to stay orientated or oriented toward the planet's surface? For example, to keep its camera pointed at the ground. I think it is probably a frame of reference thing, but it's really pushing the limits of my <laughs> intuition. Obviously, if we were to absorb, observe the orbit from a top-down perspective, the satellite would appear to be rotating, but is it still true at the satellite's perspective um, from the satellite's perspective if space-time is curved perhaps it's really traveling more or less laterally the whole time maybe a different way to approach the question is if a planet suddenly vanished the satellite would be released on a single trajectory like a stone from a slingshot but would it be spinning so while it does the revolutions around the planet does it as a body itself rotate is what they're asking Yes, to remain oriented, to keep a desired side of the satellite pointed toward the surface, the side with cameras or antennas or whatever it needs to spin only once per orbit. The ISS also does this to ensure that it's Large solar panels are always held perpendicular to the direction of travel, which helps it drag the thin uh, drag from the thin atmosphere of its orbit. Reduce the drag. It is propellant expended to maintain the rotation. In other words, I know it is occasionally boosted by uh, to maintain altitude, but do they also need to fire off fire off axis to keep it spinning at the right speed? Like you said, one rotation per orbit. Reaction uh, wheels or gyroscope controls control devices can be used to control the spin rate without any propellant expenditure and once the right spin rate is achieved it should in principle continue forever without any further energy input in reality this may be subtle influences from tides, drag, or light pressure that would have made, that would have to be compensated for. And if you have to keep compensating the same way, you may eventually saturate those control devices. Basically, they can't spin any faster to continue pushing the angular momentum one way requiring propellant expenditure to zero them out again. But yeah, I always thought it was interesting they talk about 
Um, the use um, of satellites, think of it this way, as you rotate around the Earth, you've got to keep turned if you want to keep it faced in the same proper direction. Because all of a sudden, you go around. If it doesn't rotate with it, the back side of the satellite ends up facing the Earth. And it's like it only r works r right in this area. So, and it orbits the Earth because it has to keep up with, yeah. So the uh, satellite itself would have to rotate you know, in a slight direction to keep itself facing the Earth. Because if it didn't itself rotate, like I said, you'd have the planet, but if it don't rotate, it just goes around like this, and so at one point you have the back facing the planet so it, it's on the front but then when it goes around all of a sudden it's on the back it's on the side and we're back at the front again back to a side back yeah but the satellite itself has to slowly rotate as it orbits the uh, earth now, next thing I wanted to look at here, whoop, close you down. Second most spoken language in the United States and Canada. Can we, is there any way to enlarge this? I, Let's see. Canada, mostly English and French. French in the blue section, English in French Canada. Uh, let's see. In Alaskan America, let's see what is that? Yupix. Most of the U.S. the second most spoken language is Spanish, but German is in North Dakota. And then in Louisiana and some of the more really north states, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, they speak French as, a, as the second most spoken. Hawaii speaks Tagalog, which is the official language of the Philippines. So that actually does make a lot of sense. Now, in Europe, you have in Spain and some of the off-coastal islands, the second most spoken language is Catalan. Meanwhile, in many parts of Europe, you can see it's English is the second most spoken language. In a few countries like Belgium, Switzerland, second most spoken is French. But, you know, to be fair, 
France, Germany, and then you've got these countries right here. So it's usually very... Uh, highly varied on the different languages they speak. Uh, let's see. Here in... I'm trying to remember the names of all these different nations. It's like li uh, uh, Latvia, Lithuania. They speak Russian as a second common language. Meanwhile, in uh, the UK, Polish, believe it or not, is the second most spoken language. You know, uh, Wales, England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, the total of the UK, it's Polish. Now, another interesting one, Ireland, its second most spoken is Gaelic. It keeps up with the Gaelic history. Much of the UK is Gaelic speaking tribes. And so Ireland keeps up with it, which that would be a very interesting thing to learn. You know, in my opinion, here. In, I'm not sure, Slovak, Slovenia, it's like Slovenia, Slovakia, or something like that in this area. Their second most common spoken is Croatian. Uh, here would be Czech, as in Czechoslovakia, uh, Czechoslovakia, purple is German, which that would be Austria. Austria has usually been associated as being a German, a portion of Germany. That might not be Austria. I think that actually is Austria. What was that? It was another part that was usually proclaimed as part of Germany. Anyway. But yeah. You can see... How... English is very common in Europe as a second language. French in Canada, just because, like I said, you have Canada as a whole, but then there is a whole portion that's called French Canadian. You know, and it is in this region of um, Ottawa. Um, Shoot, I can't remember all who's up in here, but I think Ottawa is like the center for the a lot of uh, French Canadian uh, culture. Montreal, I think, is in this area somewhere as well. Uh, but yeah, now we want to. Look at this, because I thought this image is really interesting. Children, school children, saying the Pledge of Allegiance in the United States in the 1930s. Does it remind you of anything? You know, the arm outstretched. It very much reminds me of what would turn out to be Nazi Germany.
and you know Ger not uh, Hitler wouldn't take power until 30 33 I want to say 32, 33, something like that. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> very reminiscent of that time. Many people think, oh, we were the good guys. Uh, unfortunately, we had an ideology that seemed to have been very similar. Please me uh, pause your video there. Supreme Court rules for web designer who refused to work on same-sex weddings. In a blow to LGBTQ rights, the court said creative businesses can refuse to sell certain products and services if they disagree with the message the customer wishes to convey. So that should mean I, if I was a creative business, I should be able to refuse conservative groups if they, you know, came in to order something. That's uh, This is how I see their ruling now. But, yeah, this is just another excuse to try to rip rats away from the LGBTQ. This Supreme Court's at its lowest point. I mean, there's only like, I think they said a 29% favorability rating. <laughs> so, it's heavily underwater. And making these kind of decisions does not help it. So, fuck this Supreme Court. We need to pack it. This is from The Independent. January 6th fugitive shared Trump post revealing Obama's address hours before their arrest. Taylor Taranto, 37, added, Got them surrounded when reposted an article shared by Trump mentioning Obama's home address. January 6th rider on the run from the law who was arrested outside the Washington, D.C. home of former President Barack Obama shared a social media post by ex-president Donald Trump revealing his predecessor's address hours before he was detained. These right-wing psychos are so far gone that they don't give a shit about rights, about, you know, decency. Nah. Taylor Taranto, 37, was arrested on Thursday on charges stemming from his activities during the Capitol riot in early 2021, but he was also discovered to have several firearms and the materials needed to make a Molotov cocktail in the neighborhood of the U.S. Capitol where Obama, the Obamas live. Right-wingers are just out-and-out -out terrorists now. This is from The Guardian. Supreme Court leaves intact a Mississippi law disenfranchising black voters. The court turns away case on law implemented over a century ago with explicit go of preventing black people from voting. The U.S. Supreme Court turned away a case on Friday challenging Mississippi's rules around voting rights for people with felony convictions, leaving intact a policy 
implemented before more than a century ago with the explicit go of preventing black people from voting. Like I said, this is a sh this is a shit Supreme Court. It's went downhill since Trump's additions to the court. This is from Insider, Business Insider. Sotomayor dissents after SCOTUS underlines protections for LGBTQ plus people. A sad day in American constitutional law. Justice Sonia Sotomayor blasted the Supreme Court for siding with a web designer who wanted to not serve same-sex couples. Sotomayor wrote a fiery dissent arguing that high court's decision will lead to LGBTQ plus Americans becoming second-class citizens. Today is a sad day in American constitutional law and in the lives of LGBT people. Exactly. Exactly. From the Independent, Biden reveals new path to student debt relief after Supreme Court strikes down the president's plan. Yeah, the president slammed Republicans for having snatched away the hope for student loan borrowers. After the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the administration's plan to cancel federal student loan debts, for millions of Americans, President Joe Biden has unveiled a new path for relief, one that is assured is legally sound and but will take longer. You know, that they took to court the attempt to help average American people shows how evil some of these politicians are. And I say evil. It's not just, oh, it's our belief in the way things should. No, you're fucking evil. You'd fucking execute them if you'd have a chance. Fuck you all. You don't care at all about the average American. This is from The Independent. Supreme Court made me a second-class citizen. I woke up on June the 1st, an American citizen enjoying equal protection under the law. I end Pride Month a second-class citizen. In a 6-3 decision split along party lines, the Republican Supreme Court today ruled that it is lawful for Christian business owners to discriminate against same-sex couples. The case was brought by the Alliance Defending Freedom. You ain't defending shit, shitbags. You're taking away rights and freedoms. A far-right Christian organization classified as an anti-LGBT plus hate group by the esteemed Southern Poverty Law Center. So, yeah. You know, fuck these right-wing Christian organizations because if they actually followed some of the tenets of Christianity, what they're doing would never be allowed. But nah, for them, fuck people if they don't recognize my Christianity. Anyway, this is from Columbia University Medical Center. Economic inequality cannot be explained by individual bad choices. 
a global study led by a researcher at Columbia University School of Public Health and published in the journal Scientific Reports finds that economic inequality on a social level cannot be explained by bad choices among the poor nor by good decisions among the rich. Poor decisions were not the same across all income groups, including for people who have overcome poverty. While economic inequality continues to rise within countries, efforts to address it have been largely ineffective, particularly those involving behavioral approaches. It is often implied, but until now not tested, that Choice patterns among low-income individuals may be a factor impeding behavioral interventions aimed at improving upward economic mobility. So, yeah. Turns out, a lot of it doesn't depend on individual choices. Sometimes, you know, people getting screwed or other people getting a foot up is socially and societally built in. And that's what needs to be addressed. But when other people have brought this up before, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Burr! Fuck you, fuckers. We have proof. This just shows more and more that we know what the goddamn hell we're talking about. So, fuck off! This is from the BBC. Australia legalizes psychedelics for mental health. Good. Whatever can be used to help people should be an option, should be on the table. Australia has become the first country in the world to legalize the use of psychedelics to treat some mental health conditions. Approved psychiatrists can now prescribe MDMA to those suffering post-traumatic stress disorder and mush magic mushrooms for some types of depression. A controversial move has been held as a game changer by many scientists and mental health experts. Exactly anything that can be used and tested, you know, is a good leg up. Sit there just, I disagree with the use of this, so you can't use it for anything. No, that's not how things should work. Bodies had to be illegally dug up uh, so doctors could examine them and work on them at night to better understand anatomy because at that time there were laws against, you know, um, uh, I don't even think there was autopsies, to be fair. So, any knowledge we had on anatomy and human physiology was rudimentary at best. But it's because people went above and beyond to understand things. And now we, we understand. This is from Reuters, Russia's ruble tumbles past 89 cents versus the dollar to over a 15-month low. The Russian trouble, or the Russian ruble tumbled past 89 cents against the dollar for the first time in more than 15 months on Friday weighed down by domestic political risk concerns after an aborted armed mutiny over the weekend and lacking any support drivers. The ruble was 
0.8% weaker against the dollar at 89.15 cents after earlier hitting 89.3275, its weakest point since March 29, 2022. You know, if you would make common sense decisions, come to the table, but no, He's got to act like he's the one always being attacked. Now, here's some videos for us to watch. That's pro-imperialism. A lack of consistency when it comes to U.S. foreign policy. Territory without recourse, then, I mean, that's pro-imperialism. That's not, uh, and that's still no, a war. No, uh, yes, a lot of people around the world do a lot of bad things. I don't think the U.S. should be an empire going and funding wars all over the world. We're not funding wars. We're funding the defense. I mean, like, and, and there's a, there's something that you can be said where, where should we draw a certain line? I have already conceded that strings should be attached and we should be involved in peace negotiations. But let's, to, let's, to, to, to flatten the power dynamics here, I mean, I would imagine, this is like the same argument that you hear uh, when, it comes to Israel and Palestine, right? Where Palestinians are defending themselves, and then it's oh my gosh, uh, they are just a compl it's completely symmetrical. Uh, Israel and Palestine; these are two actors just battling it out. To no, favor of one. There. I would love to fund Palestinians so that they were able to have a better life. You are life to the themselves. right of me on foreign policy. Well, we already fund Israel, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you against that? That's a tougher question. I don't have an answer uh, to. <laughs> 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 Yep, he showed how inconsistent he is. Well, that's a tougher question, you know. <laughs> Sounds like a very similar question, but, you know, whatever. Police chief sentenced to eight life terms plus 75 years for setting revenge fires. Burned down a neighbor's house twice for speaking the over him. The escorted out by Howard County Sheriff's after the guilty verdict. The panel finding former police chief David Crawford guilty on all 12 felony counts. Eight counts of attempted first degree murder, three counts of arson, and one count of malicious burning for setting four fires in Howard County between 2017 and 18 to get back at people he didn't get along with or felt snubbed by his chiropractor, a woman who cut his wife from a volunteer program, and a neighbor down the road in Ellicott City's Dunlogan community. She cut him off during a public meeting, so he torched her home twice in less than a year. <laughs> Prosecutors use evidence from 12 fires in six counties Crawford is accused of to successfully convince this jury that he's a serial revenge arsonist who was done in by using the same M.O. Garage fires set in a driveway using gasoline before dawn when people inside would be sleeping. Every victim had a connection to Crawford and every victim's name appeared on a target list in Crawford's phone. That list was instrumental. I think we all know that. Crawford's attorney, Robert Bonsip, also spoke with 11 News after the verdict. Well, we're obviously disappointed. This was a very difficult case whenever prosecutors allowed to put 12 different uh, incidents before the jury. It's a, a very challenging uh, matter. Mr. Bonsim said an appeal is in the works. Even the trial judge remarked that this is a case the state Supreme Court may ultimately weigh in on. Prosecuting, let alone winning, attempted first-degree murder charges in an arson case where fire is the deadly force is not unprecedented, but it is uncommon. Wow. And he's supposed to be, you know, the good guy. Because he was a police chief. <laughs> wow. This is why I say we need reform, police reform. We have to have police reform. Absolutely have to have it.
This is from another video we got. Um, two mothers file a lawsuit against Fire Chief who held teens at gunpoint for turning in his driveway. The judge wouldn't issue a warrant 29th last year and went from Anderson County for the chief okay, okay. without Listen, charging stay teens. Stay in your car and lock the doors, okay? Don't get out and don't yell at them, okay? Alright, yes, we can't. They're making us get out of their car with guns. They're putting on, they're making a kid on the ground, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm getting, we're getting on the ground. The incident started on August 29th last year and went from Anderson County into Oconee. Along with the lawsuit, the Oconee County Sheriff's Office has reopened an investigation into this situation after investigators say the sheriff received an anonymous letter asking him to review the case. Townville Fire Chief Billy McAdams admitted to pointing a gun at two teenagers after they turned into his driveway on August 29, 2022. A lawsuit has been filed accusing McAdams and his son Wyatt of assault, false imprisonment, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. The lawsuit states two teens were driving along Fairplay Road in Anderson County when they realized they needed to turn around. The two teens said they waved as they did their U-turn, but then started being followed. McAdams admitted to pursuing the vehicle for around 15 minutes. In 911 calls released by the Oconee County Sheriff's Office, the young driver describes being followed by two pickups. They're yelling and trying to run us off the road. And all we did was just, we just made a little quick turnaround in their yard, gave them a wave because they were in their garage as we went by, and they've just been chasing us ever since. The incident. Psychopaths! You do not go after them because they used your driveway. No, that is not how the law works. You could have defended them while they were on your territory. You, you could have confronted them there, but following them down the road? No! That's bullshit! That is bullshit! Fuckers like that need to be placed in jail. They need to be fired from any positions of power like he's supposedly a fire chief Fuck this motherfucker. The report states that McAdams had boxed the vehicle in on Point Wildwood Drive and he brought out a gun. They're making us get out of their car with guns. They're putting on, they're making us get on the ground, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm getting, we're getting on the ground. During the incident, both parties were speaking to dispatch and dispatch for Anderson and Oconee counties were speaking to one another. Does he have a gun out? Tell him to put his gun away, Jacob. In the incident report, McAdams said he believed the vehicle might have been involved in a burglary on his property, since he had been experiencing a lot of thefts. Once he realized how young the two people were, he stated he put his firearm away and talked to them. Billy, yeah. listen, listen, can you get in your vehicle as well and just not talk to them and separate yourself from them? We've got people headed that way, okay? That's but fine. I don't want... I'm okay, good, ma'am. Okay. I'm good, ma'am. Okay. I'm good. Okay. I reached out to the lawyer. I don't give a fuck what you are. Motherfucker. You pursued them in a threatening manner. This was not defending your home. This was a fucking threat. Fuck this shit bag. Ah. He needs to be imprisoned. For what he did. At least a fucking 30 day imprisonment and a fine to this goddamn son of a bitch. Lawyers representing the mothers and they could not comment. A statement released from McAdams lawyer states, quote, First and foremost, Mr. McAdams is extremely concerned about the situation and is committed to addressing any allegations with the utmost sincerity and cooperation. We believe a complete picture of all the facts will validate our client's position and are confident in the ability of the legal system to deliver justice, end quote. The sheriff's office says after the sheriff reviewed the case, he had some concerns and has asked their criminal investigations unit to follow up. In Oconee County, Alessandra Young, 7 News. I don't give a goddamn. What he did was immensely wrong.
Uh-uh. But you know what? He'll get away with it. Oh, he's a good guy. He's fire chief. Fuck you! District Attorney has announced criminal charges against two San Rafael police officers involved in a violent arrest nearly one year ago. Body camera video of the incident shows two officers beating and shoving a man to the ground while arresting him for having an open container of beer in public. The District Attorney says there is enough evidence to pursue charges against Officer Brandon Nail and former Officer Daisy Mazariegos. They are charged with assault by an officer and making false statements in a crime report. It is not yet clear whether the two have attorneys. They are due in court on August 11th. San Rafael Police Chief David Spiller responded to these charges. He said, in part, SRPD respects the decision of the district attorney and will continue to fully cooperate with her office. The San Rafael Police Department will continue to deliver consistently exceptional and ethical service as we remain committed to building trust with our community. Then the gardener still doesn't want us to use his real name. We call him Mateo. It turns out his injuries were far worse than we first thought. The lawyers for Mateo tell the I-team that the treatment he suffered at the hands of two police officers was so egregious, the city of San Rafael should pay. There's no way that's necessary under any circumstance. July 27th of last year, the gardener told officers Daisy Mazariegos and Brandon Nail that he and his friends liked to have a beer along this remote stretch of San Rafael's Windward Way after a long day of work. The police asked for his ID, but Mateo explained he had to stand to retrieve it. Take out your ID, I dude. know, I know, I know. I have to take it out, but I have to take it out to, to take the ID out. You just know? sit yeah. down. Just I sit know, down. But you, you sit have down. to understand. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. You can see from his body cam that Officer Nail forces Mateo to the ground over beer bottles, punches him in the nose, and pushes his face into the rough pavement. We report that Mateo suffered a broken nose and concussion, but his attorney now says it's even worse, a shoulder injury for which he had surgery last week and PTSD. There's been personality changes. It's affected his marriage. His wife is suffering. He's fearful when he's out in public. He's uh, living very much in a, a very different life and in a very different way than he was before. Mateo's claim accuses the officers of assault, battery, false arrest, false imprisonment, intentional infliction of emotional distress, excessive force, and their bosses of failure to properly screen and hire, failure to properly train, supervise, and discipline. A spokesperson for Police Chief David Spiller told me he'd have no comment on the civil claim that their internal investigation into the officer's conduct is still underway and the Nail and Mazariegos remain on paid administrative leave six months later. The fact that they haven't been able to come to a conclusion that is pretty obvious to anybody who's seen those videos um, is very concerning. Anthony Label still can't quite believe the prosecutors filed felony resisting charges against Mateo before even looking at the video. Once that happened, the case was dismissed. Now, District Attorney Lori Fergoli tells me the case is still under investigation and review for possible criminal charges against the officers. As we sit right now, we don't know whether these officers hey, hey, hey. are going to be held accountable professionally or criminally. So a civil lawsuit is sometimes the last chance somebody has for justice. Also, no comment from the mayor and city attorney. They have 45 days to respond to the claim before Mateo's lawyers move forward with their lawsuit. And they've person. had this video for six months? Yes, absolutely. And still no action. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Dan. you for bringing that to us, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> this is why the system is so fucked up in this country. Shit like that's just brushed to the side. It's like, it got you back. Fuck you. Fuckers like that need to be put on a blacklist. Never to be hired at another 
you know, police department. Ever! Oh, that pisses me the fuck off. All right. Last video here. He's angry he got his head slammed into a wall. Cop accidentally admitted on body cam he assaulted the suspect, leading to conviction. And he's now facing zero to eight years. Why do they feel they have the right to do this to people? Fuck these goddamn cops! This is why we need police reform! He's on the other side, I'll get him 30 seconds. Yeah, probably, because he's one of those fall down city Hey, could you get a wheelchair? Body cam's going. Give your heads up. Who is it? Hmm? Who is it? No idea. He don't want to tell me his name. My fingerprint is not working. Okay. I tried to have a conversation with him, and he broke bad, and we ended up fighting. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, so he's angry, got his head slammed into a wall, but... Figured I'd get some extra hands in case he decides to do something dumb. Call my brother, man. My face, bro. You just smashed my face into the glass for nothing. Huh? Then you just gonna slam me down. Look what you just did, man. And all I'm asking you is what is going on? Why are you arresting me? Right. I told you. I no, was detaining you. You just need to turn around. No, you didn't want to listen. Tell me anything. You didn't even read my rights or okay. nothing. You didn't tell me what was going on. You just straight started assaulting okay. me, dude. Look at my Stop. Face. Stop. Look at my face, man. You just start and start assaulting me, though. And you're lucky there's no, no none of my family was just right here to witness it. You're fing going down, dude. You just assaulted me for no reason. Okay. You just assaulted me for no reason, dude. I wanted to have a conversation with you, and nah, you got squirrel. You, you wasn't trying to conversate nothing, dude. You was trying to f assault me. Okay. From the door. Well, so maybe next time I say, put your hands in the goddamn my wall, you'll right listen. In the instead of being a my jackass. Hands were in the air. My hands were in the air. Now you just All right. assault me. This guy just assaulted me, man. I like to speak to some superiors. Okay. Just assaulted me. It's all on camera in there, dude. I see another look, man, look at car. You. Come look on. At you. Let's go. Why are you trying to twist and twist Come and break on. my wrist? What the? Oh my god! Wilmington police officer has been indicted for this violent confrontation inside of a store. Surveillance video shows Samuel Waters slamming a man's head into plexiglass when he arrested him last September. Delaware's attorney general says that Waters used excessive force, then lied about the incident. If convicted, he is facing up to 13 years in prison. Uh, there was nothing he did that indicated that kind of force was necessary for use. Fuck these goddamn bastards. Anyway, this is from The Lever. Supreme Court's next gift for its billionaire benefactor. After a nudge from billionaires think tank, justices agree to hear a case designed to preemptively block a wealth tax. 
This is one of the worst goddamn supreme fucking courts! The Supreme Court has agreed to hear a case next turn that could preempt Congress and the Biden administration from instituting a federal wealth tax. Another potentially lucrative gift for conservative justices, billionaire benefactors, and the super rich. A think tank affiliated with some of those benefactors recently pressed the court to accept the case and outlaw such taxes. Why should I be surprised? You know, fuck America! So the goddamn rich can do what the goddamn hell they want! That's essentially what the fuck is going on here! Some of these Fucking shit bags need their fucking asses kicked. Oh. Days after the high court accepted the case, Joe Biden reiterated his opposition to progressives demand that he add justices to the panel, which has a six to three conservative supermajority. This is why you need to add justices to balance out that bullshit. Fuck this goddamn court. Also from the lever. It's Dark Money's court. We just live under it. From its recent rulings to its billionaire donor scandals, the Supreme Court uh, term has been defined by judicial activist Leonard Leo. Once again, the Supreme Court has issued rulings triggered, triggering national uproar. This time, the court has ruled that universities' race-conscious admission policies are unconstitutional, that businesses can deny services to LGD, LGBTQ plus customers, and that Joe Biden can't remove the can't move forward with his student loan forgiveness plan, and just. Like the justice's decision last year to end federal abortion protections and other troubling SCOTUS developments this term, the court's new decisions are all examples of how dark money reigns supreme. That's because one person's fingerprints are all over these developments. Conservative legal activist Leonard Leo the king of dark money. And based on Biden's response to some of these new court rulings, it appears the president isn't going to do anything to stop them. Oh, I fucking hate this. You know what? Strip the goddamn court. Rip all justices out, so a new set has to be put in. Fuck all the goddamn court justices! Fuck them all! And put in a new goddamn court! I'm, I'm done with this bullshit. Fuck this goddamn bullshit! Mm. Anyway, educate thyself. 
think, read, study, learn. Someone tries to tell you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll be putting links in the description box down below. Thank you all for watching. See you all in the next one. Until then, later.